and welcome to this webinar where you will get to know about the qualifications offered in the Nelson Mandela University's Faculty of Engineering, the Bolt Environment in Technology, or EBIT for short. I am Timothy Speckman, a lecturer in the School of Information Technology, and I will be your program director for this webinar. In a moment, the Executive Dean of the Faculty, Professor Baron van Bey, will extend a word of welcome to all. A little later, the directors of each of the four schools in the faculty will present an overview of the qualifications offered in the respective schools. We would also like to engage with you and ask that you type your questions in the chat facility. And after the presentations, we will answer as many questions as possible. Thank you for taking the time to find out about the qualifications in the faculty of EBIT. I do hope that the information you receive here will lead you to obtaining your qualification from the Nelson Mandela University so that you too may change the world. Thank you, Timothy. Hello, everyone. I'm Barend van Wyk, the Executive Dean, and I'm greeting you from the North Campus of our university, where the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology is located. We are a vibrant faculty with strong links to industry. And if you are interested in any of the projects or technologies we are involved in, I want to strongly encourage you to visit our faculty website. To provide you with a bird's eye view of all the qualifications and offerings available to you, we've compiled a short animation. If you are watching a recording of this webinar, then you might want to scroll to the offerings you are most interested in after the animation. Please enjoy. me again. The short clip that we've just seen gave a summary of the four possible spaces that the EBIT faculty offers for you to change the world. From the video clip, we saw that the faculty is home to the School of Engineering, the School of Information Technology, the School of the Built Environment, and the School of Architecture. 
Each of these schools are guided by their respective directors who will now each present an overview of the qualifications offered in their respective schools. Let us now meet Professor Farooq Smith, the Director of the School of Engineering, who will present an overview of the qualifications in the School of Engineering. Um, hi to all. Uh, my name is Farooq Smith and today I will be welcoming you to the School of Engineering um, that's in within the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and um, Technology. Uh, so my portfolio in the School of Engineering is that of Director. I was the previous um, Head of Department of Megatronics, um, but now I represent the entire school, which includes the following departments. We have the Department of um, Electrical Engineering. We have the Department of Industrial Engineering, Marine Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, and then as well as ele Electronics. The first three departments offer the what is called the Bachelor of um, Engineering Technology degrees, which um, at the end of those degrees you qualify as a technologist. Um, and the Department of Mechatronics offers the BEng degree, which then qualifies you as a, a professional engineer. Um, I just want to go into a, a little bit into the suite of qualifications that we do offer. We have um, within the a school of Engineering, we've introduced the highest certificate qualifications. Now, the, the highest certificate qualification um, is a qualification that you can enter directly after school. And normally, students who do not meet the direct entry requirements for the Bachelor of Engineering Technology and the Bachelor of Engineering would first pursue the highest certificate. And then if the marks is uh, good enough, and I'll speak about that later, you can then enter into the Bachelor of Engineering or the Bachelor of Engineering Technology degrees if you do not make the direct entry requirements from uh, from school. So this is the admission criteria I'll be speaking about on the on the next slide. So however, if you meet the direct entry requirement or admission requirements for these two degrees, you do not need to do the highest certificate, but you can go directly into these two degrees. And of course, if you are successful, then you can graduate within the minimum period of time. After graduation, you can either continue um, studying at the university or you can go into industry and work. And then it normally takes three to four years to uh, qualify and then register as a professional engineering technologist or a professional engineer with the Engineering Council of South Africa. So it takes a few years of um, experience or work experience. Um, it is also possible to, to qualify. Um, of, uh, you can progress uh, to, to higher degrees from uh, the Bachelor of Engineering Technology, which is three years and the Bachelor of Engineering is a four year degree. But you could instead of going to work, you could uh, continue uh, after the Bachelor of Engineering, for example, um, in Megatronics, you can pursue a master's degree in engineering, which is a full research degree. And then if you would like to stay in academia and, and do research in engineering research, you can then do the doctorate in engineering or the PhD, as it is called. From the Bachelor of Engineering Technology, you can do the, the Bachelor of Engineering Technology Honours degree and then from there progress to do on the master's degree, which is the image, and then of course also the PhD degree. Um, and then from there on you can stay in a research um, career, or you can stay at that university and become an academic, um, uh, impart your knowledge on, on other students, and also do research that can improve um, um, engineering in, in future years. Now, for these qualifications, as, as I've mentioned before, there are entry requirements. For example, for the highest certificate um, in mathematics, you need at the end of uh, or your exit from high school, you need 50% for mathematics minimum. You need 50% for physical science and an application score of 330. So the way the application score works is that all your subjects the the actual uh, percentage that you do get is added together 
and that gives you what's called the application score. And uh, the Bachelor of Engineering Technology entrance requirement for that is a 60% minimum for mathematics, minimum 50% for physical science, and an application score of 330. And for the Bachelor of Engineering in Megatronics, you need minimum 60% for mathematics uh, in the metric, 65% of physical science, and then an application score of 410. And the reason for these requirements is that mathematics and physical science is very important. Uh, it's very, it's the, really the basis subjects uh, for further study in all the engineering fields. And so a good foundation in mathematics and, and physical science is very important before you can do the degree in, uh, in engineering. Um, in fact, in your first two years at university, you will spend some quite a bit of time on mathematics and physics as well. And you will see um, as the years progress from second, third year, you start applying these, um, this knowledge uh, better um, if you have a good foundation in these two subjects. Now, um, as I've mentioned, um, we have the high certificate in mechatronics. Then we also have, as of 2021, so this year, we started the high certificate in renewable energy engineering. And then, of course, I've mentioned the, the Bachelor of Engineering uh, Technology in Electrical. We have in Industrial, Marine, as well as Mechanical Engineering. And then we have the Bachelor of Engineering in Megatronics. Um, in addition to that, we also have part-time Diploma in Operations Management. This falls within the Department of Industrial Engineering. We have the Advanced Diploma in Operations Management, as well as the Advanced Diploma in Quality Management. These three fall with uh, the industrial engineering uh, department. Um, what I want to do now is I want to tell you a little bit more and go in a little bit more detail on these um, specific degrees that I have talked about. So we have the the highest certificate in mechatronic engineering. It's uh, what's called an NQF level five qualification. And it does prepare you for a career in the automated um, and manufacturing sector, but most of our students, what they do is they use this as a stepping stone to the higher degrees, uh, such as the Bachelor of Engineering Technology and the Bachelor of Engineering degrees. So you could do this um, degree. Uh, if your marks, as I've mentioned earlier, you do not have a direct entry requirement into the degree programs, you could register for the for the highest certificate. Then we also have a highest certificate in the renewable energy engineering. And this uh, prepares you for career in the renewable energy sector, but this is also used as a stepping stone to do the higher degrees. Um, it is more rec recommended to do the renewable energy in engineering if you want to go into a field such as the Bachelor of, of uh, Engineering Technology in, in electrical engineering, for example, and the one in mechatronic engineering if you would like to pursue the higher degrees in either mechanical engineering or perhaps mechatronics as well, although you could use the renewable energy engineering for that for that as well. Then we have uh, the Bachelor of Engineering Technology in electrical engineering. Now, uh, e electrical engineering really offers you a career that is uh, challenging and rewarding. So you could be interested, for example, in um, generation of, of, of electricity. So a generation distribution and the utilization of electrical energy, for example, um, the use of solar power to, to generate power in industrial as well as uh, um, uh, residential areas, how to control automated electrical systems, um, including robotics, just about every device includes electronics. And um, as an electrical engineer, you'd be able to design um, these devices. Um, you could develop the, for example, the uh, development of um, electric vehicles. Um, there is also radio engineering that falls under the auspices of electrical engineering as well. So the, the field of electrical engineering really encompasses a broad field that um, includes both the high current, which is the electrical distribution systems, as well as electronics, which is called um, the low current um, engineering. Um, um, as an engineering technologist, you would be 
mostly responsible for the implementation of this type of technology. I'll de describe later what the difference is between an engineer and a technologist, so that you can make a better and more informed decision of, for example, what field you would like to uh, pursue um, in your career. Then we have the Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Industrial Engineering. So a graduate with a Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Industrial Engineering will be able to go out in industry and focus on the development of concepts, designs and systems for manufacturing processes. So um, you could work, for example, in the auto automotive um, industry, manufacturing plants, pharmaceutical industry, agricultural system and so on. And the, the key concept really for the industrial uh, technologies is the development of efficient processes, um, the quality assurance protocols and systems for all sectors. So the job of the industrial engineer is really to make the manufacturing more efficient, to save time, um, money and resources, so well, including re human resources, for example. So you'd also have a broad uh, knowledge of these manufacturing systems, and it is then the job of the industrial engineer to make it more efficient and, and use protocols, standard protocols to do that. Um, marine engineering is a, is a new field that we've introduced um, recently. Um, in our faculty, it was introduced in 2018 as a completely new field of engineering at uh, Nelson Mandela University. So a marine engineer is responsible for the design, operation, uh, maintenance and the repair of all the equipment on board any uh, ocean going vessel above or below the water surface. For example, uh, small boats and yachts large passenger cruise ships, cargo, oil tankers, oil drink platforms and so on, submarines uh, included. And so the job of the uh, really the marine engineer is to um, design the, the, the complex mechanical and automated systems, uh, for example, the propulsion mechanics in, in marine systems, the electrical power distribution of those systems, the fuel systems, lightning and air conditioning and so on. So the marine engineer really has a, a broad view of of both mechanical as well as some electrical engineering concepts to design uh, um, marine engineering uh, vessels and sea going vessels uh, as an example. Then we have the, the degree in uh, mechanical engineering. Now Mechanical engineering involves the design and development, manufacture of uh, uh, mechanisms, structures, uh, engineering tools, material science, all types of vehicles, and really the, the mechanical and the machines that's used uh, in the manufacture of various processes. So an understanding of the properties of materials is, for example, very important in this field, and material science is an a very important um, field. Um, and this is taught to you at university. So a professional engineering technologist will eventually specialize in areas such as uh, maybe automotive engineering. You could go into power plant engineering, uh, manufacturing of composite materials and many more fields. But the two most important subjects, um, as I've mentioned earlier, is mathematics and physics. And those are really the, the foundational subjects. Um, in all the fields of, of engineering and, and very important. Then we have the Bachelor of Engineering in Megatronics. And what this um, really uh, uh, involves is this is the only um, uh, degree where you can qualify as a professional engineer, a PR range. And I'll explain when I'm done with this section what the difference between a technologist and uh, an engineer is. Uh, is that the, the Bachelor of Engineering um, in Megatronics focuses on a combination of both mechanical systems and electrical systems. So what it will do is it will bring together mechanical engineering, electronics and computer systems to build, for example, uh, uh, computer controllers for, for a robotic system, uh, mechanical systems and so on. So the Megatronics engineer would be involved in both aspects uh, both uh, mechanical as well as electrical engineering. And in fact, at the university, you will study both of these fields. 
um, as part of the PhD degree. Uh, in the first two years, we concentrate quite a lot on mathematics and physics, and this is used then later on to design these, um, these complex systems. Uh, so the Bachelor of Engineering is really a combination between mechanical and electronics engineering. Now the difference between an engineer and the technologist, the engineer will design the systems, but they can also be involved in the implementation, whereas the technologist is, is, is more involved in the implementation of a design that the engineer has uh, uh, performed. And so uh, that is, I suppose, uh, one of the main differences between the, the technologist um, and the engineer, although the technologist is also involved in design as well, but more on the implementation of the of the technology. Then we also get technicians. The technicians is more uh, involved in the maintenance of uh, implemented systems. So uh, there's various levels of, of responsibilities in engineering and all these are important uh, to maintain our our engineering systems. Now, all our qualifications uh, are approved by the Engineering Council of South Africa, um, and we have the BTEC in marine engineering is also accredited by the South African Maritime Safety Authority. Now, what this means is that once you qualify for your degree, you will be able to register with these institutes or these councils to register as a professional engineering technologist. And if you've done the PNG in mechatronics, you will be able to register after a few years experience in industry. You will be able to do the to register as a professional engineer. We are accredited by the Council of um, Higher Education and we are also registered with the South African Qualification Authority. I don't know if you've, you've noticed, but in the previous in the slides when I uh, presented these various uh, degrees, in the top right hand corner, you'll see the SACWA ID and you can check with um, these uh, these are African Qualifications Authority and verify that we are actually registered in all these uh, in all these fields. All our degrees are registered. So you can be assured that once you complete your degree at Nelson Mandela University that it is it is recognized. The um, I may add also that uh, the Engineering Council of South Africa is a signatory to what's called the Washington Accord. And so your degree is recognized in over 90 countries worldwide. And, and so you can take your degree and work in, in, uh, in most of the European countries, um, as well as in, in America, the Far East. Uh, um, and, and so your qualifications uh, will be, and you can register in those countries as professionals um, as well. That is a signatory to, real, to the Washington Accord. So this is really a, a, a summary of the qualifications we offer at Nelson Mandela University. And we really we're looking forward to you because not only do we uh, teach the theoretical aspects of engineering, but we also spend a lot of time in the laboratory uh, many of our students um, at the end of the degree, in fact, all of them have to do a, a project, uh, of quite a, a large, a big project, a complex pro engineering project. And this is really where your your knowledge that you've learned over the, the course of the degree is tested. And we use that um, as evidence of the outcomes achieved um, at the university. And that's where students really feel that they've um, really mastered their craft um, and and uh, that they are able to work in industry. So uh, we hope that um, this will give you some inspiration uh, to pursue a degree in engineering. Uh, we also have at the university the what's called the, the Wella or the Masita Institute uh, for Human in Engineering Leadership Association where we encourage, now this institute is, is run um, under the auspices of industrial engineering and we have uh, Professor Anne Lawrence. Um, and it's really to encourage uh, young women to pursue the engineering field, um, acts as a mentor and guides them through the, through, through the program until the, until the end. 
Um, on the next slide, I have uh, some important contact details. Uh, if you'd like to make contact with us, you can contact us at these uh, at the addresses given. Also go to our website for the School of Engineering and you can learn much more there. What I'll do is I'll include a short video to describe the Willa program. Thank you very much for, for listening. And if you have any questions, please, I'll be available on the night um, for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. If your interests are in information technology and its related systems, you will want to hear about the qualifications offered in the School of Information Technology. Professor Sue Petratus will now present an overview of these qualifications. Hello and welcome to the presentation for the School of Information Technology. I am Dr. Sue Petratos and I am the Director of the School. We are going to have a look at some of the opportunities that exist if you study with us. First of all, the Higher Certificate Information Technology in User Support Services. With this qualification, you can work in an entry-level technical or user support position that spans a wide range of computing environments requiring support personnel. So if you are the technical person and wants to assist with maintaining technology and different devices in various organizations, then this would be the qualification that would be ideal for you. We offer this over one year in our Port Elizabeth campus as well as in our George campus, which is in the Western Cape. The admissions requirement for the higher certificate is 290 if you have maths or technical maths at school, and an AS score of 305 is required if you have maths lit. You must obtain a minimum of 55% in maths lit or 35% in maths or technical maths to enter this qualification. These are some typical career activities that you will be involved with if you are involved in user support. The Diploma Information Technology. The fast paced progression in information technology is the driving force for research, development and innovation. In today's competitive market, Graduates need various skills and specialized knowledge about their chosen field. The School of Information Technology offers qualifications that are designed to give you a grounding in the fundamental principles required to be an IT professional. There are three diploma specialization areas. The first is support services. Support services can be a demanding career and can involve anything from being the single IT guru in a small business to a highly skilled specialist in a large corporation. The Diploma Software Development Software developers write programs to solve business problems for small businesses as well as large corporates. The trend today is to use uh, innovative apps and web development to solve business problems. Communication networks. The focus here would be on integrating many technologies ranging from communication network models and protocols to cybersecurity and network programming. The admissions requirement for the Diploma IT Software Development and Support Services are the same. You require an AS score of 330 if you have maths or technical mathematics with a 40% average or an AS score of 345 if you have mathematical literacy with a minimum of 60%. For the Diploma IT Communication Networks, you require mathematics or technical mathematics at 45% and your total AS score must be 330. You do not need to have IT or CAT to follow this qualification, however it is recommended. There are various different career opportunities that exist and having a look at this um, list shows you the opportunities that lie, away, lie ahead for you. And of course, the ever popular game developer is one of them. With technology moving so fast, there are even jobs that don't even exist in our minds yet. The Bachelor in Information Technology. 
Bachelor of Information Technology is suited for people who are interested in commerce, science, as well as technology. It overlaps into all of these spheres. The purpose of this program is to develop information technology professionals that are capable of identifying opportunities for the design of software and IT solutions to improve industry and society. The admissions requirements for this degree is a minimum NSC statutory requirements to enter the degree, in other words, a bachelor pass. You need an applicant score of 370 with an NSC grade 12 mathematics or technical mathematics, and you need a minimum 50% for mathematics or technical mathematics. If you have MathLit, you cannot have access to this qualification. IT professionals are high in demand locally and internationally. BIT graduates will focus on systems integration often using existing components and are particularly well positioned to take responsibility for integrating trending technologies into business solutions. So if you are going to be interested in the IT uh, qualification, then you must prepare yourself for a life as an IT guru. In closing, I want to summarize the opportunities that you have within the School of IT. This diagram illustrates the access points for the various offerings. Scholars who have a certificate pass can do the one year higher certificate in user support services. If they obtain 60% average, they can move on to the first year in the diploma support services. Scholars with a diploma pass can enter the three year qualification directly and those with a bachelor pass can access the Bachelor of IT directly, which is also a three-year qualification. Important to note is that all three of these qualifications can lead to a postgraduate studies. If information technology is your world, then I hope that you will be using these contact details to connect with us and I look forward to welcoming you to the School of IT soon. Thank you very much. The School of the Built Environment is home to four departments, namely Building Human Settlements Development, Quantity Surveying, Construction Management and Civil Engineering. Former Director of the School of the Built Environment, Professor Gerard Crawford will present an overview of the qualifications in this school. Good afternoon. My name is Gerrit Crawford, and I am the director of the School of the Built Environment and Civil Engineering. Our school consists of four departments. Department of Building and Human Settlement Development, Department of Construction Management, Department of Quantity Surveying, and the Department of Civil Engineering. Each one of these departments have various undergraduate qualifications. Let's have a look at each one of them. In the Department of Building and Human Settlements Development, they have two qualifications. The Building Diploma, which is a three-year full-time study qualification and is accredited by the South African Council for the project, of the Project and Construction Management Professions and the South African Council for the Quantity Surveying Profession. They also have a Bachelor of Human Settlements Development, which is a four-year full-time study qualification. What is the purpose of the building diploma? The building and construction industry is a dynamic industry with many opportunities for self-motivated and hardworking people. The industry is becoming more technically sophisticated and computerized industry, which, is result, which has resulted in a growing demand of suitably trained professionals. This qualification deals with the methods, materials, and techniques used in the construction industry. The admission requirements for this qualification is 45% for pure mass or technical mass and the applicant score of 330. The Bachelor of Human Settlements Development Qualification is a qualification that will provide students with professional skills and knowledge appropriate to a range of employment opportunities associated with human settlement development and management. The admission requirements are 70% for math literacy, 
50% for mass technical, or 50% for mass pure. If you have mass pure and technical, your applicant score needs to be 370. And if you have math literacy, then your applicant score needs to be 385. In the Department of Construction Management, there is one undergraduate qualification called the Bachelor of Science in Construction Management. It's a three-year full-time study qualification, which is accredited by the South African Council of the Project and Construction Management Professions. The purpose of this qualification is to develop an appreciation and understanding of the management of the business of construction and projects within the built environment. It includes the coordination, administration and management of resources and an understanding of management, economics and the science of, and technology as it pertains to the built environment. The admission requirements for this qualification is 55% for pure math and an applicant score of 370. In the Department of Quantity Surveying, we have an undergraduate qualification called the Bachelor of Science in Construction and Economics, which is a three-year full study, full-time study qualification. It is accredited by the South African Council for the Quantity Surveying Profession. Now, Quantity Surveyors work closely with architects, consulting engineers, project managers, planners, and contractors on construction projects as the financial consultant. Their training and experience qualify them advise on cost and contractual documents with different types of projects. The admission requirements is 55% for mass pure and your application score, applicant score should be 370. In the Department of Civil Engineering, we have an undergraduate qualification called the Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Civil Engineering, which is a three-year full-time study qualification and is accredited by the Engineering Council of South Africa. Civil so engineering is the practice of improving and maintaining the build and natural environments to increase the quality of life for present and future generations. Civil so engineering technologists design, construct, and maintain infrastructure such as structural components of buildings, dams, pipelines, and transportation infrastructure. The admission requirement is math pure or technical 60% and physical or technical science 50% with an applicant score of 370. These are all the undergraduate qualifications that we offer within our school and I hope that you apply for one of these qualifications and that we see you soon. Have a good evening. If your dream is to become an architect or architectural technology and interior design sounds like your space, then the overview of qualifications in the School of Architecture, presented by Professor Bob and Bakis, Director of the School, will speak to you. Welcome to the School of Architecture. Hello, I am Bob and Bakis, the Director of the School of Architecture. The School of Architecture comprises of two departments, namely the Department of Architecture and the Department of Architecture, Technology and Interior Design. Between the two departments, Three primary qualifications are offered. These include the degrees in the fields of architecture, architectural technology, and interior design. Although three distinct programs are presented in the school, each retains its own clear identity and outcomes. If the ethos behind the Nelson Mandela University School of Architecture is to critically engage with the making of humane architecture with a balanced theoretical and pragmatic approach shaped by the social, economic, and ecological informants with a locally rooted but globally aspiring architecture. Architectural professionals are involved in the creation of buildings in the built environment. The architectural professional applies creativity and critical thinking skills to a range of activities related to the design and production of this environment. These activities include the development of conceptual strategies, the drawing and modeling of design proposals that are developed from this understanding and the production and management of technical details, contractual agreements, and management of various teams of people related to the realization of projects as physical buildings. The process of design 
is enriched through real life projects which is both invigorating and challenging and this rewarding process demands dedication time and commitment we have two highly skilled and dedicated academic staff as hods mr andrew palferman is head of the department of architecture and mr hai sintonga is the head of the department of architectural technology and interior design we have a dedicated team of staff members who assist you with various academic and administrative matters of the school as an architectural professional you have the opportunity to make a significant difference to the quality of the lives of all people our spatial design materially affects every aspect of daily activity architecture has the ability to strongly impact the natural and the built environment from the scale of the individual buildings to the scale of cities and affects the way people live work and study and consequently how cities function architecture takes into account the specific context of a project that includes the natural and built environments and further considerations such as cultural social and economic circumstances it is a stimulating and rewarding career that enables you to work with a diverse range of people under different circumstances and on a wide variety of project types the school has excellent track record with the validating boards we have national and international validation from south african council for architectural profession and commonwealth association for architects to this end we will briefly review the courses that are offered the bachelor of architectural studies or bas program is a three year professional degree once successfully completed it can lead to registration with the south african council for architectural profession as an architectural technologist the bas program acts as foundation for entering the bas honors degree in architecture the fifth and final year of architecture is a masters of architectural professional degree can lead to registration as professional architect the architectural technology is a three year diploma qualification and can lead to the registration with sacap as an architectural technologist graduates then have the choice to study further for either an advanced diploma in architectural technology that focuses on technology or that focuses on design core purpose of interior design is to create interiors with the spatial qualities that are habitable for people on all levels of experience aesthetically functionally psychologically and economically interior design is a 3 year diploma qualification learners who successfully complete this qualification can then continue with a 1 year advanced diploma in interior design once you have graduated with your advanced diploma in interior design you are able to register with the african institute of the interior design professionals diverse employment opportunities in the architecture and interior design fields include work at architectural practices furniture designers and fabricators property developers or avenues into urban design landscape architecture and 3d visualization Nelson Mandela University's teaching philosophy is recognized as humanizing pedagogy. It is about dislodging outdated theories and narrow-minded preconceptions of teaching, learning, and human engagement in order to stimulate an inquiring approach to education. To this end, we have adapted a learning and teaching approach that makes use of multimodal, flexible remote learning processes. This includes multiple online platforms and software that ensures students have constant access to all the course content and lectures if you have any further queries regarding this presentation or admissions please take note of the following personnel who will be willing and able to answer all queries alternatively you can send any queries to the displayed email addresses or view our department facebook or website pages for more information best of luck for 2022 admissions and thank you for listening
Hi, once again, it is great that you could be here with us today. I hope that you now agree that the Nelson Mandela University is the place for you to pursue a qualification in engineering, information technology, the built environment and architecture. Like I promised at the beginning of this webinar, we would like to answer questions that you might have. Please use the Q&A facility to type any questions. Due to time constraints, we might not be able to answer all of your questions, but we'll surely try and answer as many as we can. You can also visit ebit.mandela.ac.za or search for Nelson Mandela University Faculty of EBIT on YouTube to find more information about the qualifications in the Faculty of EBIT. Let us now see a few of the questions that are in the Q&A from you. Right, so for the first question, we'll ask Dr. Sue Petratus to answer this. And uh, the question is, can you do the higher certificate in Port Elizabeth if you get accepted um, to study in George or Fort George? Dr. Sue Petratus? Hi, everybody. No, you definitely cannot. If you get accepted in George, then you need to study in George. Um, we are limited by the number of people that we can accept because of our lab spaces and accommodation in res, etc. So please make sure that you apply at the correct campus. And just a reminder that George is 400 kilometers away from PE. So make sure you apply for the right um, campus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Petratus. Um, let's take one for the School of Engineering. And for this one, we'll call on Mr. Wayne Dry to answer this for us. Um, what is the difference between an engineer and an engineering technologist? Um, Mr. Wayne Dry, would you be able to answer that one, please? I think that one will have to be answered by Professor Smith. All right, sorry, uh, Professor Smith, please. All right, yes, thank you. Actually, I did answer that question. Um, I addressed that in my presentation, but I'll be happy, happy to, to um, just repeat that again. Um, an engineer would be involved in design of systems, engineering systems. Technologists would be more involved in implementing those uh, design systems, although technicians uh, or other technologists also do get involved in, it, in the design. So the, the, the the line is really blurred between the two, but um, engineers uh, do spend more time on, on, on design of systems and, and engineering technologies on uh, implementation of, of those systems. Then you get technicians as well that uh, uh, really spend their time on uh, maintaining the systems that was implemented. So in a nutshell, that is what I would answer. Thanks for the question. Uh, thank you, Professor Smith. Um, we would appreciate as well if you could uh, maybe type more questions. We, we are um, happy to answer your questions. In the meantime, can I ask uh, Mr. Bob and Vargis to answer for us if it is possible to present uh, the portfolio of, of works as a digital file and then appear for the interview online, uh, Mr. Vargis? Hello, right. uh, would you mind if I jump in for Bob? Yes, please do, do go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Bob, and I think Bob is here. All right. I think, sorry, my microphone was muted. Uh, what I was answering is for all three programs, for the Diploma in Architecture, Diploma in Architecture Technology, and Diploma in Interior Design, there are specific requirements for the portfolios. And these portfolios can be um, presented digital. Um, very much based on the specific requirements I mean, if you meet for individual programs. And after the presentation of the portfolios, you will have to appear for an interview, and that interview sessions can also be managed online. So based on the requirements and the, the details that is given on the website as well as on the presentations, you can contact the department administrative assistance, and if you need further assistance, we will assist you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vargis. Um, OK, so this one will be for, for Mr. 
um, Wayne Dry. Uh, Mr. Dry, what is uh, professional registration and will I have it if I complete my studies either in uh, quantity surveying or construction management or any of the other qualifications in the uh, School of the Built Environment? Thank you for that question, yes. Professional registration is when you when you are allowed to 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 practice on your own, to to open up your own business, and to be able to sign off certain documentation, which allows you to 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 then go therefore go further and uh, and, and and be that professional that you need. Um, you do not become a professionally registered individual once you have concluded your qualification. However, there are certain steps that you'd have to follow in order for you to become a professional quantity surveyor or a professional uh, construction manager or professional construction project manager or even a professional engineer with X and that. Those are steps, but before you can do any of that, you will have to, of course, start out either with a diploma or a BSc degree and make your way through and then register as candidates for the respective uh, councils. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dry. Um, I'll call on Mr. Grant Phillips to please answer this question related to electrical engineering, and that is what kind of fields can you go into in electrical engineering, Mr. Grant Phillips? Perhaps while we may wait for Mr. Grant Phillips, um, I can ask uh, Dr. Petroctus to please answer, um, what would the difference be between the Bachelor of IT degree and a degree in um, computer sciences? Yes, I can do that in the meantime. So both degrees, uh, both qualifications are degree qualifications. Um, the difference with the qualifications is the focus of the qualification. Uh, computer science students, um, they would focus on developing software, they would work with data analytics, um, etc. While the BIT graduate is a person who needs to be on top of the game with regards to technology. So they will basically have a look at the technological solutions that exist and integrate those with the um, uh, software that's been designed to, to solve the business uh, uh, problem. So they need, really need to be technology specialists. Thank you, Dr. Petratus. Um, Mr. Grant Phillips, are you now able to, to, to take that question for us, please? Um, and the question was, what fields uh, can an electrical engineer go into? All right, it appears as Mr. Grant Phillips might be experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, can I ask Professor Anne Lawrence to maybe answer this question for us? Um, what do industrial engineers study? Professor Anne Lawrence, please. Thank you for that. Um, industrial engineering is really a combination of our engineering modules, and we've added some business and operations type modules to it. So the first semester for electrical, industrial, mechanical and marine engineering are the same to create the foundation with the um, engineering heavy modules, if I can call it that, and maths and physics. And then in industrial engineering, we add modules to our engineering curriculum, which includes finance, um, leadership and operations management. We also have a few modules for quantitative and qualitative um, analysis and statistics. So industrial engineering is about making things leaner, better and faster. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lawrence. It, it definitely does. Um, I think we'll take one last question, and this one will be for uh, the School of Architecture. And uh, perhaps Mr. Andrew uh, Palfreman can answer this one for us, please. 
It is mentioned in the presentation that uh, architecture is a studio based learning program. Could you elaborate on this and clarify how this is different uh, from lecture based programs, please? Mr. Andrew Palfermer. Um, Andrew may not be on. I think maybe Yasan can answer. OK, please go ahead, Mr. Boggies. All right, thank you, Boban. Um, yes, so basically, to elaborate or to just make it a little bit clear, um, the studio base is more in terms of the practical aspect of it as well. Um, you will be called to be able to design, to present a physical model, and to have a one to one, or a, how we call it, a online face to face crit sessions. And then after that, you are going to have the opportunity to correct then your presentation to have a better mark. This gives then the students in a open open air studio where you are going to be in a, where in a class where it's about 50 students, which will have an input on your design as well, because that's how the culture is. You don't just work on your own in, or in isolation. And that's what we normally call an open based studio. Right. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Tonga. Um, so due to time, we'll, we'll have to leave it there. Um, I, I do see Mr. Grant Phillips is now available. Mr. Mr. Phillips, would you like to uh, answer the question uh, quickly before, before we end, please? Sorry, could you repeat the question quickly? Sorry, I, I was disconnected. All right, not a problem. Um, so, Mr. Phillips, the question says, uh, what fields in industry would an electrical engineer go into? Um, generally, in electrical engineering, we would have um, basically a power generation, um, distribution. Uh, we have an electronics field uh, wherein we would do um, electronics, um, uh, servicing of devices, building devices. And then also we have an embedded field where we work with microcontrollers. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mr. Phillips. Right, so because of time, we'll have to leave it there um, for now, but we do thank you very much for taking the time to be with, uh, here with us and to find out more about the faculty of EBIT. We hope to see you in the faculty in the near future so that you too can study towards a qualification that will change the world. We are going to play out now with a, a video that will give you um, more information about the qualifications in the faculty. Please also look out for the links to our social media as well as our YouTube channel where you can get a lot more information about the qualifications. And all the best um, for your qualification. Thank you.
The Nelson Mandela University School of Engineering is offering a unique Bachelor of Engineering Technology degree in Marine Engineering. A globally recognized three-year undergraduate degree that is accredited by the Engineering Council of South Africa and the South African Maritime Safety Authority. This prepares the graduate for a career in design, construction, maintenance and operations of ships, boats, yachts and all marine structures above or below the surface, such as oil rigs and offshore structures and submarines. A career at sea as an engine officer or on land as a technologist designing, building and maintaining. Not only restricted to the maritime environment, the marine engineer can pursue a career in the energy sector where that same power systems and technology are used to provide energy efficient electricity. Marine engineering at sea, on land and in recreation. Passion for engineering. The Department of Mechanical Engineering is positioned in the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology, also known as EBET. Within the faculty of EBET, there are four schools, that is engineering, the built environment, information technology and architecture. The School of Engineering has four departments. These are mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, industrial engineering and mechatronic engineering. The mechanical engineering department have various research and engagement units and centers that support projects for students and the manufacturing industry. Mechanical Engineering Entities The Engineering Innovation and Technology Transfer Station have approximately 35 to 40 engineers that perform specific work for the manufacturing industry, from design to research on battery management systems for electrical vehicles. This entity employs interns and provides training for industry, as well as lead masters and PH students in projects. This is a unit that you can get involved with once you are completed with your studies or an internship. The Advanced Mechatronic Technology Center includes autonomous groups that builds autonomous vehicles such as aerial, fixed wing and rotary drones. The Renewable Energy Group does research and project development in renewable energy. The Siemens Training Center trains industry participants in control systems. There is an advanced engineering design group of students that get involved with final year projects. The STEM in Action project assists laboratory experiments for physics at the high school level. There is an engineering development program that is sponsored by Mercita and undertake various undergraduate, postgraduate school and college projects. The Marine Engineering Laboratory that provide training and short learning programs to industry. The AMTC appoints student interns in under and postgraduate projects up to PhD level in various projects within the entity. Should you have any administrative or registration queries, these are the persons to contact for assistance. Thank you.